All right, I think we're on. Uh, so welcome uh, everybody and thanks for jump, jumping on again. Um, today we have uh, just as lovely um, Mick McFarlane <laughs> um, from Swagman Tours. Um, he said he was actually more attractive than Zoe, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave that open for debate. So, uh, so Mick, um, everybody knows why we're doing these, uh, these videos to give um, travel agents a chance to stay connected stay relevant, get some information and, and find out what's going on out there in the world of uh, suppliers and the reps um, and obviously get some ideas and things that they could be doing in the downturn to help them come out um, the other side uh, better and, and, and stronger than they were before. So, so Mick, tell us about yourself. For those who don't know you, uh, who are you? Where'd you come from? How did you end up where you are? What's, what's your backstory? Uh, so firstly, for those who don't know me, this isn't um, my, normal, my normal look. Uh, it varies at times, but um, as I'm uh, currently stood down, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, thought I'd grow a bit of a growth. So uh, there, there you go. But look, uh, oh, look, I've now been in the industry, Josh, for some 33 years, if I take myself back to 1987 when I started working for Kentucky in Europe. Um, had a big stint with them. Most of the companies I've worked for have had long stints. So I did eight years with them in Europe five on the road, three in the London office in, as the transport manager. Um, moved back to Australia, became a uh, travel agent and then got into repping in 99 and uh, was fortunate enough. I, I got a job with a great company, uh, Adventure World, did a couple of stints with them over about a 15 year period, had some time at um, ETG here in, in Queensland and also did four years with um, Toucan and this is Africa. I'm now currently working for Swagman. I've been with them for just over um, 18 months and it's awesome. It's probably um, one of the best jobs I've had in, in some degree because uh, it's challenged me even at this stage in my career. It's um, thrown a lot of different things at me, a lot of different aspects to the industry. Um, we are only a small company, but um, you know, I think we're a very good company. So, um, been with uh, Wayne and Sol and for, as I say, uh, just on 18 months. I look after Queensland and New South Wales, albeit I'm based in Brisbane. So, I do get out and about a lot. Um, and I have done other work for the company when need be in WA, SA, Victoria. So, I've done a lot of travelling in the last uh, 12 months, 18, last 18 months, really. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite a different position for me. And what about Swagman um, as a company? Can you give us a quick synopsis for those that maybe don't know the brand that well? Yeah. Um, what do you guys do? What do you what do you specialise in, and what do you provide to the industry? So the irony of this is that Swagman uh, are a Geelong based company. I grew up in Geelong. Their head office is still in Geelong, and now I get to go home to Geelong. Wow. Um, the current owners, Solar and Wayne, have had the company for just over eight years now, and they've really diversified. So we specialise predominantly in African overland tailor-made safaris, and I shouldn't say overland. I really do should focus on the tailor-made component of who we are, but um, we also do India, uh, Sri Lanka, Middle East, and during this particular moment in the travel industry we've decided to do a soft launch on our South America product that will come out yeah. so as much as things are at a halt we're still forward thinking as to where we're going to be in in 12 months time so we have a lot of groups and we do it we have quite a unique component to the company is that we um, do a lot of field days and that probably doesn't mean much to a lot of people but we actually um, places like Henty, Murrum Bateman, um, Elmore, they have all the farming community, I guess, come together. They have these mini shows, Eckers kind of scenario. Um, yeah. A lot of trucks and tractors and soil and irrigation and all that kind of stuff. But we actually run some agricultural tours around the world. So we've got our DMCs that we can tap into for that product. Um, and when we take goat farmers to South America, we'll do avocado farmers to Africa, just different 
itineraries and we have them on our website as well. So quite and, unique. Uh, that's great. And uh, Mick, how are you coping at the moment? You obviously said at the start that you are currently on a stand down, like oh, I'm stood down a few, a few of us uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah. How's, uh, how's that going? How's, how's self isolation, I guess, going? How's, how's, how's life treating you really? So, um, I oh, look, mate, in the last few weeks, we've had a lot of, um, I guess having that time, thankfully I've got a, an amazing back deck. We spent a lot of time on it, but we had a interesting scenario there with a video of a, um, a huge, huge, uh, snake. Um, it, a few days pre previously the, um, strangled a possum, swallowed it whole. Um, a <laughs> couple of days later, it reappeared and the snake catcher came in um, and provided a lot of wide entertainment. Uh, if anyone's seen my Facebook page, it's on there. So uh, he actually fell three metres off our back deck <laughs> in the process. And then when he finally caught it, he, um, it shat all over him. So... Uh, <laughs> There was a lot of comedy. Um, I pretty much held it together. A little running commentary, nothing over the top, but um, just going to ask him if he, was, if he was okay. Anyway, from that to um, getting in the kitchen, you know, making sausage rolls, doing banana cakes. Um, there's a curry on the go tonight. Just different foods. Yeah. And then the handyman stuff around the house, you know, doing all those little odd jobs that probably most of us don't get that opportunity to do when we're focusing on our on our work yeah um as we probably all seem to do and some good family time which is well, i don't think we've had an argument yet and there's four adults pretty much in the house so no, you're doing well you might have alcohol. Oh, yeah. quite <laughs> of alcohol, quite of alcohol <laughs> has been consumed but uh there you go we might have to grab that link off your uh off your little video of the snake um, oh yeah it's it, funny mate. Really cool. yeah 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 um cool mates and uh what about for i guess for swag man what's um What's how's this impacted you guys as a, as a company, as a, as a team here in Australia? And you know, what's what's that? What's the everyday business look like for you guys at the moment? So yeah, currently uh, it's just the directors who are working, so they're going through chronologically and dealing with any of our forward bookings as far as um, our group, lot of our groups um, and rebooking them where they can, and dealing with the tailor made component of uh, of our business as well. So. Probably not such a great time for them. And this is where I feel for, you know, the agents and, and other wholesalers as well. It's, it's, it's a tough time. Um, everyone stressing about what's going to happen, what their future's going to be like. And look, I've got the same scenario here with my son, but that's another, you know, he was due to travel in another four days. Poor bugger, first trip overseas and it's been pulled from underneath him. So, mm -hmm. um, so our guys are dealing with that on a case by case. Where we can, we're going off to the suppliers to see what um, we can do to help agents. Um, and in some cases, that gets, it gets a little bit tough, especially if um, monies have been paid. But they're dealing with that, they're processing that. As I say, sometimes that's not all um, that pleasant for them. For me, I'm not involved with that side of the, the business. So um, there's a bit of talk around the fact that we'll go on to the Job Keeper program. Yep. Um, as a company, we're still sending out um, updates as to where we're at. Uh, we've, we're sending out promotional type stuff. Uh, in fact, I just just before I came on, um, had a look at our website and there was a um, flight to South America for six forty nine return in um, uh, ex Sydney. I think I it was. I saw someone. I saw someone yes. posting that on Facebook today. Yeah. Was, today only. Yeah. It's, it's like just book it today. And, yeah, and you can you can change it for free. Just yes, yeah, so, just basically book it, give us some money, and, and we'll hope for the best type concept. Yeah, when when you're ready to go, it's like yeah, yeah. thought, wow, how how good's that? You know, and so as far as our New South America product for that, you know, we're wanting to roll out for for the future. I mean, it hasn't been a great time to do it, but it, it's going to be there. So it's one of the things that we were building towards. Is you know directors were building towards for the company and um, yeah. I guess it doesn't hurt to just have that out there to let people know now that we're there yeah. um, and a few other uh, ads that we're just putting through on our on our web page that um, those that uh, follow it will see so um, how far is um, how far are you guys pause till like what have you what dates have you got sort of floating around at the moment the inevitable um, 
it's interesting. Like I, I would like to think that we're going to be up and running sooner, but my guys don't seem to think there'll be any international travel before the end of this year, which, you know, saddens me in a lot of ways, but um, I'm thinking more personally, that means that I won. I'm not going to get to go anywhere this year. Um, And I won't be the only person in that, in that, you know, box, but um, where does that mean as far as the business goes that, you know, our guys want to retain the staff. So hence the, the job keep, uh, for us if if we get on to that um, but I've also been told that you know if I pick up any other work in between that you know I should grab it yeah uh, so I, I think we're just trying to keep it fairly low-key in the sense of we, we're going to wait and see I mean it's all we're all, it's all governed yeah you know it's it's a government until international airlines can fly again and people start feeling confident about travel yeah um, and we all will. We'll all go again, mate. It'll be there'll be a rush. Oh, absolutely. Um, and you know, I, I I guess it probably just means that we've all got to be prepared for that. Yeah. Um, and that's going to mean a lot of different things to to different agencies and businesses. And and look, you know, I've had a part time job at the Brisbane Cruise Terminal for a lot of years, and I feel a lot of pain and suffering for the cruise guys at the moment because they're probably getting it really hard being hit really hard but people will cruise again this is the thing people will cruise Uh, there's been one case here that certainly hasn't gone maybe as well as it could have yeah um but i think people will will overcome that um i agree and uh i've uh i should be in las vegas today (laughs) yeah there you go yeah at at the end of a a little two week America trip. So, um, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat. You know, I, I really want the, the skies to open again. I, I want us to be able to travel internationally. Obviously we want to be able to travel safely and I think we all do. Um, mm. but it's, uh, the unknown is, is quite challenging. So I guess on that note, you know, the unknown, um, you know, let's say it's a few months, let's say it's longer. Um, from your point of view, I guess, you know, you guys offer quite a, a unique product, um, you know, in, in destination, it's just probably something that a lot of travel agents may not necessarily feel super familiar with or, you know, are experts in those areas. What do you think that, you know, an agent should be doing right now, um, you know, to, to get themselves upskilled or, or, you know, more knowledgeable in those sorts of um, types of traveling or, or destinations, you know, ready for when people are able to travel again? What, what do you think they should be doing now? Yeah, well, with all the different mediums now, I mean, some everyone learns in a different way. Uh, so people, myself included, you know, um, and I must admit, I have a list of things that I, I want to do because when I start talking about destinations sitting up behind me, I think, well, I, I need to have a read on that destination. I'm very much a touch and feel person. Like I need to go see, do to sometimes absorb and, and get an understanding of that destination from a cultural aspect from the person personal aspect of it um but of course we can't all do that all the time for everywhere that we actually sell so where you can look at some of these tutorials that are out there look at the different web pages even just go in and and have a look and and funnily enough my um daughter uh is studying secondary teaching she's in her last year uh she's doing geography as one of her subjects and um she had a map of Malaysia up the other day. So, you know, we'll just have a look at that. And it's interesting when you start looking at the connections and, you know, it's just good to re-familiarise yourself where you can and spend that bit of time scrolling through, even if it's, you know, Google or Facebook to find some of that stuff, you know. Um, we don't have a lot of training uh, tools on our webpage. Most of our agents will phone us and speak to our expert res team to, to get what they need. And they'll very helpfully, you know, take you by the hand and, and guide you through that sort of stuff. So, you know, we don't have those pages that some of the other company on. And I listened to Zoe's um, talk earlier. I mean, I think it's amazing that a lot of those companies have got that. Um, it's just not, we're probably not at that stage of our business. What do you, so, uh, what do you think the most common, I guess, questions or um, the areas that are lacking the most when those agents are calling up and speaking to those expert res guys? What do you think 
you, you know, if you could, if, if all your res team got together and said, Hey, I wish that they'd all just do a little bit of research on X or, or Y, you know, not that they obviously don't enjoy helping them out, but there must be some common themes that are coming through or, or misconceptions or people that just are unaware of certain things um, that you I, guys, I, you know, help them with. I, I think for, and even the people I speak to. So when you're talking about an African, and I'll use Africa, I could say India, I could say South America, but you think of that destination, you think of the fact that in the AU, the African Union is, depending on who's in the union at the time, because it fluctuates, 53 to 56 different countries. Most suppliers, most wholesalers are selling probably 14 of those. And there's a lot of them we don't sell for reasons. But, you know, it's then how do I put that two and a half, three week itinerary together and make the most of my African trip without it being hard work? Because those that come in and want to start right down the bottom in Cape Town and work their way up through Kruger and then go to Victoria Falls and then go up through Tanzania and into Kenya. It, it doesn't happen at two weeks on a ten thousand dollar budget. Yeah. So that, that in a lot of in the, a lot of our cases is trying to fit the clients' time frame around a budget and what's going to be best for them. And I often say that less is better because you can be more focused. Break that, break that trip up into two separate itineraries of about two and a half weeks if you can. Yeah. Um, and you'll get better value out of it. Um, but, you know, like in some cases, we just want to go and do it all. Yeah. You then got to have the time and the money to do that. So that, that would be the, the thing that um, I guess even our res team would, would get those questions asked about. You go to a, in a Botswana and all of a sudden you've got to, um, you're restricted with the amount of luggage you can take. Yeah, because you've got a light aircraft flight into a remote campsite that's self-sufficient. So they don't have free running water and a, and a motorway going down the side of them delivering supplies off to them daily. So it, they've got to get food in there. So you're restricted to your luggage, but you've just got off the blue train or the Rovis rail and you've been dressed to the nines. Yeah. So you've got all this amazing outfits with you. You've then got your safari gear that you've got to take. And of course, take a pair of togs because there's going to be a, a punch pool somewhere. And how do you get that into 12, 15 kgs of luggage? So yeah. the, the luggage component. So they're, they're all the little things that, you know, yeah. our guys will be able to run you through yeah. when it comes time to planning that itinerary. Yeah. But um, that's why, you know, and for everything that we do, it's all by phone. Yeah. You know, so I like that. A lot of people like that, particularly for the destinations that we're selling. So I guess what I'm hearing is call the res team. They're experts. <laughs> yeah. Don't, 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 don't try and know everything about everything and see if you can get your, your clients to reduce the amount of um, highlights or, or things that they have on their list of must-dos, slow it down a little bit or maybe break it into two trips um, yeah. if they can. And, and whatever they think it's going to cost, um, tell them it'll cost them three times. Double, as double pretty much. Double, yeah. yeah. No, and there's the other thing, you know, you always get asked how much should I budget a day? And, and to be honest, I, for many years now with the various companies, and I mean, depending on what level you want to go in, if you can't, you need probably somewhere between 600 to to $1,000 a day per person Yeah. to, to put an African itinerary together. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot involved in that. Absolutely. That's a lot of people's hard earned to, to go and do a trip away. So, um, it gets gets hard, it can be hard, but you can. But that's where the guys will talk you around. They might suggest a, a, an alternative uh, lodge to stay at, which will yeah. just fit into someone's budget. Yeah, and even on a budget for all those kids, but people with kids that want to go. Yeah, it's great. It's a great family destination. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, mate, I think that's uh, that's helped us a lot. Um, understand a little bit more about Swagman, get to know you a little bit better, find out what's happening in, in your world and, and the isolation world. Um, and, we really appreciate. And look, just just on that note, I mean, I've always been a big advocate of of doing a lot of sporting activities. I think it's really important that people get out and do something for themselves at the moment. Get out, go for a walk, take the dog, kick. Don't kick the dog. Have a kick of the footy with the kids, whatever it might. Jump on the jump on the trampoline, Josh. Yeah, you know? yeah, I was. Get out, do. I know. I heard. <laughs> eh? um, but you know, just get out and do something for yourself. I mean, I'll, 
for years of you know like people said oh, i don't have time there's no excuse yeah. you know we've all got time now and i think it's more important at the, this particular time to get out and have you know i went for a run with my daughter she's not fast last night but she's you know she's been playing women's afl so i just trotted along with her and here's the thing check me out on the weekend i'm probably going to go and do something really really stupid I'm going to try and run nine Ks every hour from 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. So I've got an hour to run nine K. Some people will understand what I'm talking about. Probably comfortably done in 50 minutes. Yeah. Um, every hour for as long as I can. Wow. Now it's a, it's a, I got a couple of crazy mates that do a lot of ultra stuff. I haven't done anything for a while and I'm just thinking that maybe I'm stupid enough to, do it in this time of a virus so that's impressive mate I, th- I always said that if i wouldn't run unless someone was chasing me or i could kick a soccer ball <laughs> at the end of my run so um fair play to you nine kilometers an hour for every hour until you for can't as, anymore until you can't until until the hour ticks over and you haven't completed your 9k is that right yes yeah, if, yeah, yeah right. if you can't do if you can't do it you're out you're so out. there's probably half a dozen bikes that are going to be doing this of my mates that'll do it on the weekend it's what is it it's like a death by workout isn't it i think something yeah yeah yeah. i think i've done one of those in crossfit or something at some point death by something and then a basic it's like a beat test once you miss the beat you're yeah you're gone yeah yeah Yeah. anyway biggest biggest beat test in the world (laughs) just do something yeah do something for yourself i think it's important no i think it's it's good advice mate and um I'm sure everybody's out there at the moment um, thinking of things that they should be doing. Um, and I guess, as you said, at the times now. So whether that's working on, on your business as opposed to in your business as a travel agent, um, whether that's your personal health, your mental health, uh, reading more books, getting more knowledgeable. You know, we all know we could be doing more. Um, you know, we've got the time to do it now, which is, which is yeah. great. So. And I think we're so lucky because we've got such a supportive industry. There's people out there that you can give a, have a chat with, you know, make contact. Yeah. have that virtual coffee or, or beer so um yeah. in fact there's a group of us having a beer tomorrow afternoon oh nice i'll be there yeah cool <laughs> well uh, again mate thanks for your time really appreciate it um you know some good advice in there and um it was it was good to hear how you're coping through this this period uh the only thing that you've got left to do um before we hang up is uh is to nominate three so uh, um, three of three of your, your your friends again. They don't have to be Queensland based, Australia based. We're we're here for everyone. So anyone you can think of, we'll uh, we'll tag them in. All right, I'm going to throw um, Maddie Drummond under the bus. Okay, where's Maddie? Work? He's G Adventures. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I haven't seen Matt for a while, but I've done a lot of work with him in the past. So uh, he could be good fun. Absolutely. Uh, Graham Werner. Yep. APT. Graham. Yeah, good to hear from uh, he's, he's posting some amazing photos at the moment. So um, I've seen those, yeah. Yeah. And why don't we throw one to Steve York? Steve, yeah. Yeah, Albatross. Yep, yep, sounds good. So, I'm right. staying with, hanging with the boys. Hanging with the boys. Uh, we'll, we'll tag them right. in and, uh, and hopefully we can get them on and have a chat and see what they're up to in, uh, in this in this isolation time that we're all, uh, all dealing with at the moment. So again, mate, really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Um, I'm sure a lot of people watching will get a lot out of it. Um, so uh, we hope to see you and Swagman on the other side, um, bigger and stronger than before. So we look forward to hearing about that South America product as it come out too. So, sure. um, so, so keep us in the loop. Uh, but yeah, thanks, mate. And we'll talk to you soon. Cheers, Josh.